I'm excited to perform here tonight. And yes. I hope you like it. We will. When I was younger, I used to receive phone calls from my grandparents, uncles, and aunts on the morning of my birthday. Their voices would travel through the phone as the calmness of a single wave that you'd want to experience over and over again. As the wind running its fingers through the tree's leaves, leaving behind a symphony of beautiful legatos. As voices that enveloped me tightly into a cocoon, as voices that when they called, I closed my eyes trying not to forget. I could hear their voices. I could hear them feel them as if I were there, as if I were not merely cradling an object to my ears, staring out the window, preventing my voice from cracking beneath my feet and losing my footing. They would ask me when I would come visit Mexico. I'd say soon. My uneducated eight-year-old self made the mistake of then asking when they would come here. They would chuckle a sigh. I didn't yet want to believe. And then, hearing their sadness, I would make a promise. I would whisk them away from where they were, hug them tightly and never let go. I'd buy an enormous mansion, make it filled with happiness, music, laughter, hugs, jokes, parties, games, bicycles, teasing, food, big beds, small pets, TV sets, swing sets, plants with nothing or everything. It didn't matter just as long as I had them and their voices with me, everything would be fine. We would have each other's warm embrace. Our shadows would touch against the setting sun. Laughter would ricochet against the walls, off into future hiding spots, through the gathering room, onto the family table, onto the exquisite soil of a garden we would bless with our hands, onto the front doormat that would yell, welcome, instead of get out onto the porch where we would host our late night talks with the stars, with the endless mass of beautiful, bright, blinding stars that I would no longer hold envy for because I would no longer be alone. Because we'd all be happy. We wouldn't need anything else. I would no longer stare at a random family passing through the aisle of a grocery store, wishing that what they had was mine, wishing that I was drenched with the laughter they graciously dripped from their mouth, wishing that their interlocking arms were not a fence keeping me on the outskirts, wishing that there were arms that interlocked with mine. Because you can't wish for something yearn for something, reach for something on top of the highest shelf. If it was in your hands, if it was with you, if you had it near, if it could caress your cheek and wipe away your tears, my trembling small hand would hug the phone closely to my ear, as close to feel him sigh once more, the conversation ending there, with a click and a tick from the bomb I held within. At night, I would stare grimly at my cake, swirling with colors while gray swirled inside of me. And then I would make a wish, wishing that the dream, no promise would be true, that this could be the one that would be kept. And I wept, I wept because I blew on the eight colorful bright candles, on the flames, on the fiery red, on the hot embers that left the imprints of soft loud echoes in my brain, watching it unfold, watching it diminish beneath my cool breath, my cold tears, the gnashing grimace of my teeth, the hidden shrieks of my eyes, the curled wrists of my rough hands, yet I still remained alone. A hopeless liar, I still remained with my heart on fire. Thank you. <laughs>